All right, welcome to Defeating the Watchtower number three. This one, if you are Jehovah Witness, do watch the entire video and pay attention. This is extraordinarily important. As you could probably see from the thumbnail uh, slide here on YouTube, this is uh, a video about uh, demons, angels, and women. And we're going to look at two Golden Age magazines. And you see originals right here. Now, I, I'm sorry for some of you if I, you know, I, I constantly repeat myself, but for some of you, this may be your first video. I use nothing but original Watchtower literature. These are original Golden Age magazines. Uh, this one here is July. You're, you're, you're going to see here on screen in a minute. I, I, I took uh, pictures of both of these. You're going to see close-ups. This is July 30th, 1924. And this one here is December 3rd. 1924. So in July 30th of 1924, we have a recommendation to read a book called Angels and Women. And this is the original first edition of Angels and Women. And you're going to, again, you're going to see it. The photographs for the book were, took in, were taken, excuse me, right here uh, in my library. But this book here, as you will see explained shortly, is a revised book from the original, and this is Seola, which is where angels and women came from. Uh, again, same with angels and women. You are going to see close-ups of title pages, etc. Uh, again, from pictures that I took here. So do watch this very interesting video on a a lesser known topic of the past. One reason this is lesser known amongst Jehovah Witnesses is especially those that are Jehovah Witnesses book collectors. These are extraordinarily rare books that I don't even think you can find today. Um, I'm very fortunate to have first editions myself. Um, so um, that's why this topic is probably not talking about, I, I think, enough because you just can't find the original books. So I want to talk about it. I'm going to show you in the original books, and we're going to show you why this is extraordinarily important. Let's do that now. Now we're going to begin right where we left off, and we're going to start with that first Golden Age magazine you see here in front of you, July 30th, 1924. And we're going to look on this page here, which is 702, and you'll see on page 702, we're going to look at the bottom portion down here. We have a review of a book, so let's look at that in a little more detail. Review of a book. Here it is. Angels and Women is the title of a book just off the press. It's a what? It's a reproduction, a revision of the novel Ciola. Now, you've already seen an original Angels and Women and Ciola. And you can see Ciola was written in 1878. So, this is a review of that book, Angels and Women, right? Which was the revision of Ciola. Now, what does it say about it? It says, Pastor Russell read this book. That This book being Ciola is what they mean. Uh, with keen interest and requested some of his friends to read it because of the striking harmony with the scriptural account of the sons of God described in the sixth chapter of Genesis. So um, our dear Pastor Russell, the founder of the International Bible Students, who later became Jehovah's Witnesses, uh, was just enamored with the book Seola. Now, Pastor Russell has died, by the way, at this point. He died, and God does indeed have a, humor, have a sense of humor. He died on Halloween of 1916. Well, this is 1924, so right. So I just want you to keep that in mind. So this is Judge Rutherford now is the president of the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society. So when he says, we call attention to the book because we believe it will be of interest to Bible students, which that's what your witnesses were called back in the day, Bible students, who are familiar with the machinations of the devil and the demons and influence and exercise, etc. So they're calling attention to this book, this book being angels and women that they want them to read. So the book they're telling us now, and you know, I've never read who actually revised it. I don't know if anybody is alive that knows uh, today. If so, then I, I just haven't heard, or I, I don't think anybody knows. But the book was revised and published by a personal friend of Pastor Russell, and one who was close to him in his work. And, you already, and you're going to see here in a minute who it was published by and where it was published. Now, you did see this book. I just wanted to give you a close-up uh, picture of this very same book, which I just showed you a minute ago. And there's Ciola. Uh, printed in 1878, which is the original Angels and Women.
So we have a recommendation in July to read this book called Angels and Women and a little bit of history about it. Now we're now here we are, December 3rd, 1924. Now we're going to get some letters. You can see this page here. It looks like it's page. I got to scoot up close. 150, I think is what it says. And we got letters now to the editor and a reply to the editor. So we're going to start with um, this introductory paragraph. We present some letters, too. Uh, regarding this book, Angels and Women, right, which recently appeared in their columns. Well, that's July it recently appeared. So here is the first letter to the editor. And this person said this. Very interesting. I made some inquiries and was told that it was a book that a fallen angel dictated to a woman showing the desire to come back into harmony with God and that Pastor Russell approved the book. I had never heard of the book before and as we are all to shun anything akin to spiritism, I should like to know positively whether the book has your approval before buying one. So if it's not asking too much, would like a reply. Well, that's kind of a critical comment. I mean, if you read the July Golden Age, they're telling you get the book and read it. So um, Mrs. W.S. Davis here in Los Angeles is still a little gun shy about this book for what she wrote here. Well, let's see what the second letter says. Second one is a completely different tone. Uh, with much pleasure and profit has the book Angels and Women been read by many truth friends. It contains so much to encourage one to loyalty and faith in God. And this person goes on to say how they want to go buy a bunch of them and hand them out. So two completely different kinds of letters. Now we're going to have the, the uh, Watchtower Bible and Tract Society's reply. So here they're speaking in their reply. And it says, under his supervision, his being Pastor Russell, this book, Ciola, was revised and turned into Angels and Women and later published by one of his, his formerly and his confidential associate, uh, associates. And the new book is published under the title Angels and Women, which we know. So they're basically telling us something we already know, but they're giving us the authority of Pastor Russell here, saying he's the one that asked that this thing be done, and it is done. Let's go on to the last part here. As to it being a violation of the vow, now, here's what they mean by vow. We're going back to this very first comment where the person by Miss Davis was a little concerned about spiritism. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the vow here, but the vow was uh, something that Pastor Russell had the Bible students do about 1908, 1909. They had to take this series of vows and one of them was and was to stay away from spiritism so that's why that's the link between you see the word vow here and you see spiritism in that first letter so let's go back to this as to it it's being a violation of the vow to read this book such an idea is not worthy of consideration in other words don't worry about it it would be no more wrong to read it than it's re than to read what say the scriptures about spiritism or talking with the dead both of those are two books published by the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society that have to do with spiritism. Then they go on to say, basically, they're giving us another um, a thumbs up here. Many have derived much benefit from reading Angels and Women. So in July, they said, get it and read it. And here in December, they're saying, it, there's a lot of benefit to reading Angels and Women. Now, let's look. Oh, and then they tell us here in the very next page, Angels and Women, published by A.B. Abakic and Company in Madison Square, which... Here we are, and this is the very same angels and women you just saw me hold up a minute ago. Uh, A.B. Abaca Company, uh, you can see here a revision of a unique novel by Mrs. Mrs. J.G. Smith. Now, she didn't put her name in Ciola. Uh, it takes a little digging to find that out, um, but, um, but that, that is accurate and that's true, and this was done in 1924. So we are going to look at three pages in Angels and Women, and we're going to look at the foreword. So... First page of the foreword tells us what. A number of years ago, Mrs. J.G. Smith published this novel, Ciola. She claims to have been impelled to write it after listening to beautiful music. You know what? This is really akin to automatic writing here. You have this woman in Victorian America era who is sensitive to the spirits. And this book just kind of comes into her mind. And she writes it down. So... Red flag should be going up, by the way, for you, uh, those of you that are uh, 
attuned to the Bible. Then it goes on to say the greatest Bible scholar of modern times. Oh, this that it always I always laugh when I read this. This is Pastor Russell, of course. He read Ciola shortly before his death on Halloween in 1916. And he advised his personal friend to revise Ciola and publish it if you know the opportunity should ever take place. Now here's the very next page of the forward. I have nothing for you on this page, but I did put it here for those of you that want to read it. We're going to look at the last page of the forward, which is this one here, page five. Here's what the reviser of this book says. It says, now read this carefully with me. The reviser of this book, that, that is Angels and Women, is of the opinion, um, or seal, I guess we could say. The reviser of this book is of the opinion that the original manuscript, Ciola, was dictated to the woman who wrote it by one of the falling angels who desired to return to divine favor. Think about that for a minute. A fallen angel is what? A fallen angel is a demon. We got a book from a... Ciola is a book from a demon desiring to repent that's what angels and women is that's what ciola is and pastor russell's dear friend who created angels and women from ciola recognized it right here for us what do we have god's only god's only channel of truth on earth is telling its readers to read a book by a demon no wonder they got a letter in december of 1924 from that lady from los angeles wanting to put the brakes on this going whoa whoa we're supposed to stay away from this stuff not read it and the watchtower told her to read it many people a divine benefit from it again this point needs to be made again god's only channel of truth the watchtower is telling its people to read a book by a demon absolutely shameful I used this slide in the previous Defeating the Watchtower number two, and I'm probably going to use it again and again and again because I want you Jehovah Witnesses to realize what you put in your own, what your society says about the society itself. I just chose, chose seven decades because it's, I just got lazy and quit from there. I could keep going backwards and forwards, etc. But the point is this. Let's just look at the latest one in July of 2020. We also need to trust in the only channel that Jehovah is using today. Jehovah is only using the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society? No, they're not. Because the real God of the Bible is not going to tell his people to read a book from a demon. That's why we can't trust anything in the pages of the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society. The Watchtower Magazine, the Awake Magazine, and the scores of books, books, pamphlets, and records, and etc. That, that you guys have published. Absolutely not to be trusted. And, and why? And here's the last slide. Because now the Spirit expressly says that in later times some will depart from the faith by devoting themselves to deceitful spirits and teachings of demons. And what do we have here? The teachings of demons. My friend, if you are indeed in the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society and this troubles your soul as it should, you need to repent of your faith in this organization and leave it. You need to come to the real Jesus Christ of the Bible. If you're in the, in the, in the society and this doesn't trouble your soul, I'm troubled for you. Yeah.